What happens when a volcano erupts underneath an ice sheet? Most of the time when we imagine volcanoes, we think of glowing lava, fountains of ash, and dramatic explosions. But what happens when a volcano is blocked by ice and glaciers? Here in British Columbia in Garibaldi Park, this interaction between lava and ice has led to some of the most unusual landscapes on Earth. And today we're diving into the story of how they formed. So let's get started. Ice is technically a mineral and therefore glacial ice and ice sheets with all the impurities and sediments they contain are technically rock. However, there's one major difference between most rocks at our surface and ice, which heavily influences the way magma interacts with it, and that is temperature. When magma rises beneath a thick glacier, it's instantly met with freezing ice and meltwater that leads to really rapid cooling, which can one, shatter lava into fragments of glassy rubble called hyaloclastite. Two, trap eruptions in pressurized meltwater lakes, creating violent steam explosions. And three, if eruptions keep building up, the lava can eventually break through the ice cap and erupt into the air. The landforms created in these situations are completely different than normal volcanic landforms. One of the most distinctive features is the Tua. A flat-topped, steep-sided volcano formed entirely under ice. Lava erupts, piles up inside a pocket melted in the glacier, and can't spread out. So when it finally breaks through to the surface, it forms a cap of lava flows, and the result is a table-like mountain. The aptly named Table Mountain here in Garibaldi Park is a perfect example. It's around 10 to 15,000 years old and a clear volcanic signature of when this entire valley was buried beneath kilometers of ice. Another dramatic feature is a volcanic spine, where most of the softer volcanic cone gets eroded away, leaving only the hardened volcanic plumbing in the middle. Garibaldi Park's Black Tusk represents the skeletal remains of a stratovolcano that erupted over 170,000 years ago into an icy environment. Unfortunately, we are not walking an extra six kilometers to get to where you can actually view it better. Um, so this is what we're getting, and I'll put in some hopefully better B-roll later. <laughs> Okay, so we were able to get a slightly closer, slightly better view of Black Tusk, and now you can see that this dark, jagged rock stands over the park as a reminder of the volcano that used to be there. And this volcanic kind of neck or skeletal part that shoots out is what's left just because it was more resistant than the material that surrounded it, and so it survived the glacial erosion that took away the other material. And sometimes lava erupts directly against glacial ice, and instead of forming solid, coherent rock, it kind of collapses into unstable piles of volcanic rubble. For example, at Mount Garibaldi, eruptions built large flanks against valley glaciers around 200,000 years ago. And when the ice later melted away, those slopes were left as piles of loose debris. And that's why Mount Garibaldi's lower flanks are pretty much just unstable rubble even today. But the story doesn't end when the eruptions stopped. Because the glacial cycles of the Ice Age have been, well, cyclic. <laughs> Glaciers have advanced into and retreated from this region at least four times in the last 200,000 years. And when glaciers advanced again after these eruptions, they carved out valleys, scooped out cirques, and dammed lakes. For example, one spectacular feature here is Garibaldi Lake, which is held back not by bedrock, but by a giant volcanic landslide deposit creatively named the Barrier. So while volcanoes and glaciers might seem like opposites, together they create rare and beautiful landscapes found almost nowhere else. From tuas to volcanic spines to unstable rubble slopes, this region shows us the fingerprints of eruptions that happened not in air, but beneath thick ice sheets. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning what happens when volcanoes meet ice. And if you want to learn about why the heck this lake and others like it are so blue in these glacial, you know, mountain regions, then check out my next video, which I'll have coming out soon about essentially why these are so blue. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys there. Bye.